Welcome everyone. We are getting started here. Dash is hanging out. So you're going to see a weird movement behind me. He, you know, has to somehow be in the background. He's like my child. That's super annoying. <laughs> but it is what it is. I keep locking him out in the front of my um, house. Like I go out to get the mail and then I come back in and he's not fast enough. And then I hear him like, he doesn't bark fully when he's trying to get our attention. He just is like, Ruff, Ruff, right? Like a, it's, it's a funny little bark. So he's weird. The other thing that happened today that was super frustrating for me, some of you women can identify with this. My husband's always been heavier than me. Today is the first day of my entire life with him that he is now one pound lighter than me. So you better believe I'm like flushing my system and I'm like, oh no, this is not happening. So just funny. So I went on this morning and put makeup on. It was, I think it was like just barely the afternoon and uh, then wore it. And it's only been, I think like three hours. I think it was maybe around, around one. So it was a little less than the no normal amount of time. Mondays are always a little bit crazy for me, but I want to show you what has happened to the makeup and then go into my thoughts about the makeup. So first of all, I'm going to get real close here and it will focus in. So here's my little crease line. And when I open it up, you can actually see that it has caked. All makeups do that. I mean, that's kind of something where I'm constantly wiping, but you can also see that the makeup, the cream makeup didn't perform that well. And what I mean by that is it moved around. So also, and I don't know if you can see this, the mascara has moved everywhere. I have flakes on my eyes, flakes down here. So it's just not stayed on. So the mascara did not perform well at all. So that's a problem. And I think there's like, it's just smudgy. So the thing that happened today that happened the so I got this makeup line like last week so today's Monday on Thursday morning I put we were we were it was too busy that morning I was going to do a first look for you guys with this but um I wanted to just put it on and see how it wore for the day and it was pouring out we had like a crazy downpour on Thursday. So Jacob and I were going to get his haircut and it was far from here. So we were driving in the rain, but I put the full makeup on. So uh, one thing that I noticed that day that was really frustrating and it's kind of scary because of the rain was that my eyes were watering like crazy. Something about the makeup was causing not only my skin to tingle a little bit, but my eyes to water. So Sometimes I have an issue where I'll put like, you know, mineral essence or something. I've touched some oil and then I do this, like I have an itch or something or the, look, you can even see it looks terrible. You see that? Um, where the mascara itself will like clump here. And then I'm like, you know, so that little bit of whatever might've been on my fingers will get into my eyes and then they water. So today was, I am not touching my eyes. I'm going to put my makeup on and see if the same thing happens. Lo and behold, I get into the car with Tim. This was only maybe 10 minutes after applying the makeup. He's driving. I'm looking at my phone and they're burning. Eyes are burning. <laughs> so like the, they start watering and I'm like, what in the world? So something in the product is making my eyes water. Now I can say I'm using eyeshadow like eyeliner, which maybe you're not supposed to do. Okay, so here's where I'm gonna get into this and where, again, I don't sell this product. I didn't buy it from a friend, so there's no bias here, okay? This is just a review. I was aggressively forced into this product several years ago from another rep that we were doing a trade and she kept sending me samples of the makeup and I couldn't use it because there was talc in it. And I was like, there's a no-go on that one. So I just threw the stuff away. I said, just stop sending me stuff because I'm not going to use it. <laughs> okay. Since then, talc has been removed. Okay. Um, I've also gotten some several emails from several of you reps and I'm sure some of you are on here right now. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I am for MLMs. Let's get that out of the way. I am not an anti MLMer. I sell Young Living. I love supporting my Norwex friends. And I, you know, when the leggings were around, I bought all sorts of leggings. I still wear them as my pajamas. <laughs> so, so to say that, like, like I have no problems with MLMs. Um, 
I was excited about Beauty Counter because all of these people who kept coming at me saying Beauty Counter is clean, even, even today, someone e emailed me and said, you know, it is the cleanest brand on the market. Okay. So this product, you remember when we put Sient up and I was like, epic fail? This is in the epic fail category. That's odd to me because there are companies like I had like, again, like Thrive is a fail, but it's not like an epic fail. Like there's a lot of random things in there that aren't like Lime Life is an epic fail. Like there's things that you guys are posting on the site. I can see you there, but here's the reason why. <laughs> and I will be posting this. The amount of synthetics in this line is insane. So I'm gonna give you the link right now. So this is, we're on Zoom. So if you're on the Facebook Live, get into Zoom. <laughs> um, and I gave you the link that they are very open about this and that's okay. So, so I want to be real clear with you. It's not that it's a toxic brand. So we have to really be careful with our words here. Like Thrive is not toxic. There are, there are come like Ilia is not toxic. It's just massively riddled with synthetics. So that to me is toxic. It might not be for you. So dimethicone to me is not a huge issue. And that is in practically every one of their items. Fine. But then you've got trimethosilocate. Can't pronounce that one super long. Again, it's another silicone of plastic used as a polymer, right? To make your makeup smooth. There's hydrogenated castor oil, which they claim is from just plain castor oil, but hydrogenated castor oil is typically a peg, and that's an, a, another synthetic ingredient. I don't want any pegs in my product. Um, the foundation, so that was just the concealer. The foundation has the trimethosiloxasilicate, <laughs> the dimethicone. It also has dimethicone vinyl, dimethicone cross polymer, and so does the, the concealer, which is another plastic silicone for powder-based things. Um, it also has calcium gluconate in there, which again, not a huge issue, but it is a synthetic form of calcium mixed with sugar and corn, and it's used to condition the skin. So again, I'm not interested in putting sugar and certain things on my face, and I don't want synthetic calcium on my face either. Um, again, we, I look at synthetics as an issue with my dog kissing my face or babies, you know, or me licking, I, I, uh, you know? <laughs> So um, there's gluconolactone in there, I pronounced that wrong too, which is, uh, it, it can be synthetic, but it also can be from corn, acts as a skin condition. Again, on their website, they, did, they said it could be synthetic or it could be from corn. So it's like, well, which one does your product use? So that's very wishy-washy. And then it has this product that is um, a trithozycaprilis, tri saline, saline, I don't know, synthetic mineral that is used to help bind pigments to the product. So that's all the kind of funky things that are in the foundation. When I got into the powder that has bismuth oxychloride in it. So that is technically from nature, but we all got all over bare minerals for the bismuth because some of you are highly allergic and reactive to it. So there's bismuth in their mattifying powder. There's also bis bismuth in a bunch of other products. So you have to kind of like know that, right? Um, there's the phenooxyphenol, which is a preservative, but it's a glycol that, uh, you know, it also can be a, a fragrance type of thing. It's synthetic that kind of has this rose-like aroma. So they use it as synthetic, you know, fragrances as one as at some point. Um, okay. So the lid glow, right? I was hoping it would stay on. I didn't really look at the last one when I put it on, but this did not stay put at all. And liquids usually do. But here's the issue with this. This had dye C2440 alkyl, alkyl dimer dil, uh, noliate. It's a synthetic um, ingredient that helps stay thick. Also has the bismuth in it. That might be what's causing problems with my eyes being like itchy. It has that calcium gluconate in it as well. It has ferric ferrocyanide in it. Now this is a synthetic coloring agent it is used in only two colors though, so prism and dusk. But again, it's a synthetic color. Um, and then the glucon, 
gluconolactone. It's a synthetic, but again, it could be corn. They didn't say which one. They said it could be either. And then it has the hydroxycetophenone, which is a synthetic used as an antioxidant. So that's a lot of synthetics covering over my skin. And what that does, and I'm gonna explain that in just a minute because I wanna keep going because it gets worse. The, the blush, okay? So, so the blush and the lipsticks. If you wanna know if a company is clean or not, that's the first place you look because in the blushes and the lipstick, you're always gonna see certain weird stuff in them if it's not a clean company. Easy to find out if the company's clean, lipsticks and blushes. Synthetic dyes are a massive no-no. It's just a massive no-no. So they appear as like red number six or you know red lake or blue or yellow. They'll be like a color with a number after them. Um, they're produced from aluminum or coal tar or petroleum. These are bad. You don't want them on your lips or on your face because you're eating it. So that's bad. There's synthetic beeswax in the Cheeky Clean cream blush. Um, again, that is a synthetic. It's a plastic synthetic made to emulate the same properties as actual beeswax. And then there's polybutene, which again is that synthetic polymer for smoothing. Okay, so the Beyond Gloss, that has the polybutene in it as well for smoothing. It has tons of synthetic dyes in them. Um, it has the poly um, isobutene, which is that thermo, it's a thermoplastic used for smoothing. Uh, it also has ethyl vanillin in, in this. So if you're with Young Living, you would know the kind of ethyl vanillin scandal with doTERRA. Um, it's, the smallest amounts make it smell like fantastic. So ethyl vanillin is like just a no-no. It's a synthetic vanilla. And then it has um, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogenated polyisobutene, which again is another synthetic skin conditioner. Okay, so why is this a problem? Here's why I want to kind of help you understand this. Again, companies can claim it's clean because none of this is, is toxic. However, beauty counter reps are usually not young living people. So they don't, they're like, yeah, it's totally fine. And if, if they're using, if you're using essential oils on your face, which by the way, how many of you are using oils on your face? And what I mean by that is you're make, maybe making a, a serum and you're putting essential oils in them or you put frankincense on your face. Okay, so the biggest problem, there's two real big problems with all of these synthetics. It's a long list of synthetics on just the, I just listed six products that I used. The biggest issue is that essential oils attack synthetics. So oftentimes a big cause of, of breakouts and skin issues are because the, you, you might've put a serum on like oxy serum. If you're using oxy serum, that by far is the most highly reactive, wants to kill synthetics, detoxifying serum like on the market. So oxy serum, I use that. I would not be able to use that. I didn't use it today. If I had used that today, I would have had all the problems. And I think that's why my skin, so my skin wasn't like flaming, but to on Thursday last week, it was, I said, it was like getting itchy. So the itchiness was the oxy serum that I use as a primer, just attacking the plethora of synthetics, like copious amounts of synthetics in here. So oils and synthetics don't play well together. So if you're going to use any product with any synthetics, you can't use essential oils on or near your face. Wherever you put the makeup, you can't put oils on. So that's like, I hope that's a big aha moment for you. So that's why Beauty Counter is like, no, I, I can't use it. I use too many oils and then I have to change and, and use some synthetic primer and synthetic face. You know, I don't want that on my face because the second reason is why so many of you loved using the Savvy Minerals um, just the, found, the, the powder foundation because it covered well, but it breathed, there was a breathability. And those of you who are like, I love my liquid foundations and, and this shadow and that blush because it stays put, that's because there's so many synthetics in it. So why is this not staying put? Like, why did my, um, you know, what do they call it? The lid glow cream shadow not stay put. They don't have any dimethicone in there. Had they put dimethicone in that, it would have stayed put. Your makeup stays put from dimethicone, okay? So, but that's plastic. 
there's all sorts of other things in there that I'm reacting to and I'm like my tearing up and it's just bad news. So this is an epic fail for me. There's just too many synthetics in it. So when a beauty counter rep comes to me and say it's the cleanest on the market, I would be like, what are you like smoking crack? I'm, I'm actually being a little facetious there, but did you look at your own brand? Right. I mean, we talk, so many of you are asking me about Mary Kay and, and I'm like, stop asking about Mary Kay. It's clearly not synthetic free. It's clearly not clean, but you guys ask about it. And so then I finally just put a post up there to say like, no, Mary Kay is not clean. And here's why. And I, I listed out the things that are problematic with it. Mary Kay is cleaner than beauty counter. That, that should tell you something. So that's kind of frustrating for me. So I'm sorry, my beauty counter friends, you may hate me now and want to like leave, but honestly, I would just encourage you to maybe just find a different brand to rep if you're wanting to, you know, if you, but, but again, some of you are like, you love your makeup and it works great, but just stop saying it's clean. because It's not. So, so um, I knew this was going to have some kickback. I knew some of you were going to be like, oh my gosh, like she's blowing up our world. Uh, but that wasn't the point. The point here that we're trying to do is we're trying to find a clean makeup line that is synthetic free clean. So it's, it can breathe on your face so that it doesn't interact with your oils. I don't want anything on your face that is going to blow up on you, meaning in acne and like if you have rashes and you don't understand why, it's because your makeup is riddled with silicones and synthetics that are not playing nice with your oils. So, man, this is eye-opening, right? And I think this whole process has been eye-opening for us. So you've asked me to, you know, keep looking at other brands, keep looking at other brands. So here's the brands that we still have up coming up because part of the problem is in the beginning, when we pulled you guys on what clean makeup you're hoping to use, these were the brands, right? Thrive, Ilya, Beauty Counter, all failed. They're not, not even close. Tarte was in there too, total fail. Like that one has so many plastics and synthetics. So there's companies that um, you've asked me to add like well people. Well people, unfortunately, not clean. They have synthetic dyes and uh, dimethicones and things that I don't want to put on my face. So that won't be added to the lineup. Um, we have Tubes & Co. that just, I just ordered today. So again, I'm still looking is there anything out there that we can kind of add? I, I want to, my goal is to give you three, like three companies that I feel you could use with great confidence. <laughs> so, so that's, that's the hope. And um, I, I hope that this has been like educational for you, informational. Uh, I will be posting mini reviews on Instagram. So please follow me over there. That's Jen author. So just type in at Jen author, my, my, um, Insta will come up and just know that if you have friends on Instagram, that will be a great place for you just to tag. I'm just going to do mini little reels reviewing each line once I have them and I'm going to, I'm all the, all of it, but I, I'm going to share like, what is the big issue here? And that it's a, if it's a fail or a pass. And I think that's, you know, you guys are looking for what do we change to? Jen, will you just tell us what to change to? Um, I, I can't share that yet because I'm still testing brands. And uh, like I have still Juice Beauty coming in. Um, Juice Beauty uh, did really well on their liquid foundation. So meaning clean, wears well. So again, there are some products that you might be like, what's good for this? What's good for this? A mascara may work with one company or not another. So I'm going to try to give you like, you know, the whole lineup of who passed, who didn't, and why. And then I'm going to give you like categories, like what was my favorite mascara though, right? Because, you know, what was my favorite blush, favorite liquid foundation, favorite primer, favorite, right? Right. Because we've talked about that, like even Crunchy's uh, powder, they're, they're just, they're finishing dusting powder so far is the best. So, um, but like their liquid foundations have dimethicone in it, but that's all they have in it. So there's nothing else really wrong with that company, but dimethicone. So I can't, you know, I, I've gone back and forth with some of the crunchy people to say, Hey, can you just like make it without dimethicone? <laughs> right. Like that would solve it. Um, so yes. Um, but, but I like having a, a brand that works well, you know, as a whole, and then maybe some, a few other things here and there. I did that with Savvy Minerals. I used most of their line, but usually I was using a different, um, 
buy makeup because you know, the mascara didn't work for me with them. Um, so, you know, that. I will also give you a beauty hack coming up on coloring gray hair because that's another beauty hack that I love doing with Savvy and I can't anymore because I actually can't get the color. I would use warm three and I'm out. <laughs> I'm out of warm three. So I found, I found the substitute and I think you guys are, this is, I have full gray hair right now and it's covered over. So I think that you will um, enjoy that hack when I do that brand, but I won't tell you what brand that is yet. Uh, but that's it for this one. So I'm going to say goodbye on the video, but give you guys a few minutes of just open-ended questions afterwards. It's always great to stay, um, come a little early, stay a little bit afterwards. And we've got another video series happening tomorrow and possibly even Wednesday. Uh, again, I'm trying to kind of roll these out so that we can come to a conclusion. We need to, we need to find our makeup, ladies. All right, so let me... Um, Stop our live stream. So this will be a replay on both jenstips.com. That's a YouTube channel, uh, J-E-N-S-T-I-P-S, jenstips.com. And then all of the discussion is happening over in club31oils.com or just go to Facebook and type in club 31 oils and it will pop up and you can join that group. Please answer the entry question though. If you add a friend to it, I automatically let them in. But if you just randomly join, we have some random men that try to join that club that are not from around here. So um, they get declined, but you know, it, it, I ask one question, which is what does YL stand for? It just means young living. Some people are like young life, <laughs> young living. Um, I love the fact that so many of you put what you think it means, like philosophically. So it's, and you get let in as well, but also please agree to the terms. So it's good stuff. And I hope, I hope that you, this has been helpful for you. But again, if you're a heavy essential oil user, um, this brand will not work for you. And it has just way too many synthetics in it for me to even say it passes. So I apologize to all of you beauty counter rep, beauty counter reps. But that's the truth. And if you, you, you know, I sent you guys all the link. You all have that link now. I will post that link as well. They are open about this. And it shows right on there that this is a synthetic ingredient, synthetic ingredient, synthetic ingredient. Again, not toxic. So we have to define our terms. Just because something is synthetic doesn't mean it's toxic. But I don't want synthetic on my face because of the oil use that I do. Okay. So that's it. Thanks, you guys.